So this is the presentation that K-Lab issues to their stakeholders every quarter. So every quarter, they create this like presentation deck that outlines the performance of the company, the state of the games, and any kind of direction they're taking. Last time in the previous video that I made about this one for um, financial year 2020, we had a glimpse of Bleach Break Souls potentially coming to console game. And little that we know, a few days later after the video I made, we had the official press release announcing that Bleach Break Souls was coming to PlayStation 4. Before that, we also had a glimpse at Kayla's strategy to diversify their monetization and potentially looking at recurring revenue models. And boom, right after that, we had the announcement for the passport system coming to Bleach Break Souls. So really, these documents do contain a lot of information in terms of how the company is performing and what is coming for the games. Obviously, it's not focused on Bleach Break Souls alone. It is focused on all the titles held by K-Lab at the moment, but it is still a very good thing to understand what is going on for this company that is developing our game. If you're new to your channel, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, comment, and let's go. All right, so first thing first, it is not good. So Caleb has had to issue a previous communication to their stakeholders just to give them a bit of a flavor that the news coming with this presentation are not going to be very good. They have recorded extraordinary losses uh, with two other titles, Love Life and um, Tales of Christiania. They, um, so essentially, this quarter hasn't been good for Caleb. And this covers all the games. Although Bleach Ray Souls uh, hasn't been that bad compared to other titles that they have in that portfolio, it is still a bad quarter and I'm going to show you why. Now, the topics of this video, so it's the extraordinary loss recorded and them revising their earning forecast, so basically their predictions for the earnings coming forward for the company, um, that they have acquired a new IP uh, for a game called a cappella, a opella, I don't know how, uh, how it's called, but it's basically a rhythm game uh, for them. The fact that Bleach Break Souls is going to be a pilot for uh, releasing their titles to console, and this is going to be coming to PlayStation 4. The fact that they've acquired um, the official secondary mobile online game distribution rights for Toho Project, that was not too, uh, too important for us at the moment. The fact that they're working with the university to expand their uh, knowledge in the field of machine learning, and the fact that they're also getting into the um, casual game uh, industry by acquiring all the shares of, an, of another company that is going to uh, consolidate their offering. And also the fact that they have changed their shareholder return policy and share repurchase. Now, this is what I'm talking about when I say this is not good for Caleb. So if you compare their revenues this quarter versus last quarter, which also holds like, you know, all the end of year events, obviously there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be a decrease, but that's to be expected. And it's happened like over the years, it's always the case because you have end of year celebrations, you've got more time for people to play the games. So essentially there's a lot more going on for the, the, for the company like K-Lab. So this decrease is to be expected. However, the one that's a bit more surprising is the 13.8% decrease year on year. So if you compare the financial results from this quarter 2021 to those of the first quarter of 2020. So that's not very, very good. And that's mainly driven by those two titles, Love Life and Tales of Christiania. Now, in terms of like Bleach Bray Souls, they have also recorded some slight decrease in terms of revenues. And that is about the G JP version, global version, and all Asia version as well. Now, um, expenses, again, just a quick note on this one. KDAB is spending a lot of money on royalties and commissions. So this is for all the titles that have like an IP uh, that they need to pay for. Example, Bleach Brave Souls or Captain Tsubasa, for example. And this accounts for about 50% of the revenue. So 50% of the money that they make is essentially going to pay royalties and commissions. So the less they make, the less royalties they, they pay because obviously it's proportionate. But still, so this is what they said. Yes, we've had a decrease in line with revenues from the game business. But what's interesting here is they've had like a 12% decrease in 
payment for royalties and commissions. So based on this, you know that this is mainly about the games that hold uh, original IPs. So you can narrow it down to understand exactly which titles have driven this decrease. And that 12% is also very close to the 13.8%. Uh, yeah, that 12% is a good indication of like which titles have been decreasing and at which rate, roughly speaking. Now, recording of impairment loss. I'm not going to spend too much time here because it's not really relevant to our, to our story. It's about Love Life and Tales of Christonia. So for Love Life, basically, it's not been performing really well. It's uh, like KDAB is apparently very good in the rhythm genre and Love Life was one of their big titles, but it's been depreciating a lot faster than expected uh, Sadly, Tales of Christonia has been very sluggish due to such issues as failures immediately after its release. So essentially, it's a bit like Pokemon Go. When Pokemon Go was first released, it was crashing all the time. The servers were down 100%, like all the time it was down. And the difference is, Pokemon Go is not Tales of Christonia. Pokemon Go is a well-established franchise. Everybody knows about it. So people still put up with it and it's worked out fine in the end. However, Tales of Christian, I imagine you have this new game that's less popular, well, actually a lot less popular than Pokemon Go. And as soon as you start opening the game, the game just crashes. You've got a lot of server issues and stuff like that. Well, that doesn't make for a good experience. And for that reason, well, it's been, uh, well, it didn't work out really well for KDAP. So now they have to recoup some of these losses. Now, um... I'm not going to spend too much time here because I don't want to overcomplexify the video. Uh, they've revised their earning forecast, uh, so they were a bit too ambitious, but the, the game performance was a bit disappointing, so they've had to revise this. Now, yeah, what they said is it's interesting to, to note that they've been at a, like, at a loss compared to a previous quarter and to the same quarter in 2020, and yet they continue from... And yet they still have saved some money because they haven't had expenses in transportation, entertainment and welfare due to uh, COCO-19 that have uh, happening basically. So they've been saving some money here and there. And yet even with those savings, they have still managed to be at a loss. Now, in terms of the game pipeline, uh, you probably know that they're working on a game based on the matchy. Uh, they also got. They also have a partnership with EA for a small uh, sports simulation game uh, that is in development, and they have the Acapella game somewhere uh, in the pipeline as well. In terms of the support model, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. Now, this is them announcing the new Origin IP called Acapella. So what they so the idea is the following. In order to make more profits for the company, instead of just having those like big titles that are uh, using an IP that they have to pay royalties for, they want to develop their own original IP so that they don't have to pay any royalties there and they can make more money out of them. So one of those such projects is called Aopel, Aopel, I, I'm struggling with that name. I'll call it a capella because it's what it is. So the launch campaign was interesting. Like they've like opened, created a YouTube channel, uh, got a bunch of voice actors, started creating like a bunch of original songs, two of them. They've hit like a good number of views. So that could be like the new driver for the rhythm musical genre for KLab, this new game. So depending on how things perform, they might just like uh, kill the love life game and go full uh, full speed with this one now this is an interesting one for bleach Bay soul so in the previous presentation they did mention that they were looking at expanding their covering and diversifying the uh, the offering for bleach Bay soul, uh, for the, their games and have multi-platform support so the idea is how do you optimize revenues for one game well, instead of developing new games, you just like make the game available on more support so that more people can play it and essentially potentially more people paying for it. That's the idea. So the more people can play it, the more potential paid customers they may get. So they are introducing Bleach Bray Souls on PlayStation 4. And as of right now, it sounds like Bleach Bray Soul is going to be a pilot. So they're only going to have this one game come into console games and they're going to be monitoring the performance of this on the PlayStation Store. Based on how much that how that works, Bleach Bray Souls might come to other consoles in the future, but also other games might come to other consoles. And I think what's going to happen is 
KDAP is probably going to have Captain Tsubasa coming to console or some of the other games coming to console to PlayStation 4 before actually expanding to other consoles because that's the easier way of doing it. Sadly, they keep mentioning that they have support in seven languages, but they haven't expanded yet to more languages. Um, that one, I'm not too, I don't really care about it at the moment. This is about them partnering with a university called Kyushu in Japan. And these guys are specializing in machine learning. So the way it works is it gives a good image for K-Lab. It's like, look, we're partnering with this university. So like, uh, you know, we, it's kind of a like philanthropy uh, thing on the one hand, but so it gives like a good image for the company. It's, uh, it's great for them. But essentially, they want to try and expand on machine learning because they want to optimize what they do more and more and more um, so that they can make more profits, essentially. So this is part of that strategy, and you're going to see it at the bottom. Um, they've also acquired all shares. So they fin uh, finished like completely acquiring this new company called Global Gear. They've just acquired it by, uh, by more and more and more shares until they got all the shares. And they converted this into a consolidated subsidiary. So what they want to do is to increase their profits, they have the hit titles with the IPs uh, that they pay for. They have the titles with original IPs like of Capella. And then they also have a support model with casual games. Like, you know, there's like tap tap games that you have on your phones, like uh, very simple games. But that still make money through uh, ads. Like you have a bunch of ads, or you can just pay like one dollar, two dollars, something like that, to just remove all the ads and stuff like, that. and you know this kind of things. So they've got this. Um, this company had games that surpassed uh, twenty million downloads. So it's just about like being in another um, in another sector of uh, mobile games, which is casual games. So this is also part of them. Now they've had a change in shareholder return policy and share repurchase. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one as well. I'm just going to skip it. Feel free to just pause the video and read that if you want. Um, and now this is interesting. So midterm management plan. So the business environment summary, they focus on customer competition and company. This side is just a copy paste from the financial uh, results for the entire 2020 year. So whatever, but this is interesting. So fundamental strategy. So they have a strategy for two things, the game policy. So they want to accumulate profits through stable management of existing titles. So they want to maintain their existing titles, including Bleach Bay Souls, and try to reduce as much as possible the depreciation of, of such projects. So they want to maintain the top line for those projects. Then they want to support for multiple platforms and devices, uh, expand their distribution areas, and add more monetization myth methods. So at the moment, not all their games have a recurring revenue models, which is like the passport for Bleach Brave Souls. They, it sounds like Bleach Brave Souls is literally the guinea pig for Caleb. Like if there's one game that they use to try out their new strategies, it is Bleach Brave Souls. So the good news is we get to see most of the things first. So we're getting the, um, we're, we got the, recurring revenue model with the subscriptions, with Bleach Play Souls. What they say right here is they're going to try implement this on other games as well. Now, when they say expansion of distribution areas, they are going to try and add support for more languages so that the game can expand in more areas. And just like they've added like Asia release for Bleach Play Souls, they might do the same for other games that they have. But again, Bleach Play Souls is the driver for such uh, experiments because they want to try with the biggest game because if it doesn't work for the biggest title it won't work for small titles so bleach Bay souls is the pilot and then the other games are going to follow in order of popularity and then the support for multiple platforms and devices well it's essentially like getting steam versions of other other titles that they have and getting uh, ps4 support and in the later future we might get like other consoles if that really worked and then they want to reduce costs and secure profits by streamlining development and operations. Basically, they want to automate as many things as possible. They want to be able to reuse as many components as they can and just like optimize their line of production as much as possible to decrease costs 
of uh, operating cost, cost of operations. Then they want to accumulate revenues and profits through new title hits. So they want to acquire popular immersive IPs with global distributions. So that's a bit like Danmashi that they have in plan. It's a bit like Jojo because they're planning on work on Jojo, but that one seems to be like tailored for the Asian market alone. So we might not see it outside of, uh, of the Asian market. They want to focus on specialty genres and develop games that leverage their strength. So they want to focus on niche, uh, niche genres genres because there's less competition. So they're like, if we go in that direction, we're going to have less competition. So we're going to be the major actors in those specific genres. And one of the genres that KDAB is very strong in is the rhythm genre. And that's why they say this. And you're going to see later that they have multiple games in that genre. And then they want to increase the pipeline by increasing efforts with proven external development companies, whatever. Now, the last one is they want to secure sources of earnings other than conventional games, development and operations. They want to acquire uh, earnings other than through conventional games, such as through casual games and support model. That's why I mentioned it with the casual games, those like tap tap games and uh, with you have in which you have like a bunch of ads and you need to pay to remove them and stuff like that. Um, and they also, they're also seeking for game-related businesses that they have synergies with uh, in the game business. It's probably like the uh, EA partnership. Now, in terms of the midterm management plan summary, this is their vision until 2023 with the forecast that they have. So as I mentioned with the game policy, so earning base using uh, earning base uh, use stable operation. Ex so this is like all the existing titles. So Bleach Base Souls, um, I was going to say Spirits of Fire with you. Bleach Base Souls, um, Captain Subasa and the other major titles. This is what they're going to try and maintain and avoid the depreciation of such assets over time as much as they can. They want to have like new hit titles coming up in the pipeline as well. So that's probably with the Mashi. Um, I've talked a bit more about that match in the previous video. And then finally, this is the um, support model and casual games thing. So they want to have like all three of these to drive profits for the company. They want to go from revenues of 33.9 billion yen to 50 billion yen in revenues over the next three years, which is mm, it's all right. Now, these are the main games that they have in the pipeline for achieving such targets. So when they say uh, here, new hit titles, this is what they are talking about. The game in partnership with EA in the sports simulation game uh, genre, and then the Danmashi one. That one, I'm not too fan of this genre, so I'm not uh, spending, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Then they have the acquisition of popular IPs. This is like Bleach Brave Souls, All Star, Love Life All Stars, Captain Tsubasa, and now those two titles are coming uh, to increase the portfolio. As you can see, in terms of the genre covering from uh, from K Lab, we have action RPG. We have a single hit title, which is Bleach Brave Souls. I wonder if. Dan Mashi is going to be in the action RPG genre as well. But this is a good thing that KLAB only has Beat Ray Souls in this genre because they're going to focus their efforts on this. If they had like multiple titles, if one is performing better than another one because it's newer and less depreciated, they might kill one of these. So having a single hit title in that category is a good thing for Beat Ray Souls. Dan Mashi might actually be coming here. Then in the small simulation, we will finally have competition. So Captain Tsubasa is the main driver of sales in that genre, but the partnership with EA is gonna bring a second title. So the way I see it is in the future, we're gonna have uh, Captain Tsubasa and that game with EA, and then we're gonna have Bleach Brave Souls and then Mashi next to each other. And finally, they wanna have some more games here. So we're gonna have the Acapella game coming to increase that offering. And with this, that means like they're gonna have four titles there and they might actually like kill one of the, 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 the titles that they have if it's really not savable anymore. Um, yeah, this is their game policy, which I find very funny. So like, it's like three main pillars, system integrated, uh, system integration for game operation and distribution, structuring an organization with efficient operations and pursuit of universal UX. Yeah, uh, I'm a UX designer myself and nah, their UX practices are absolutely terrible. Now, this is interesting as well. They, they want to increase the, uh, the value of the titles they offer by doing the following. So they want to have more language added to meet the needs of more users. They want a fair operation without time lags, smooth distribution across new platforms, and added value from reducing strain on operation. This is like a very important sentence. The company will close the monitor to sharply increase digital users in the regions of Southeast Asia, the Middle East, 
North Africa, Russia, Latin America, etc. going forward. So this and this being on the same side means they are exploring language support for Spanish, Russian, Arabic, and some more. Now, this slide has been here for until uh, from the past four months, uh, roughly. Like that was in my previous video, I did mention this is what gave me the hint at Bleach Bay Souls coming to console. They want to do this with more games if the pilot with Bleach Bay Souls worked well. This is what they say about the diverse, uh, diversified monetization. So they brought it to Bleach Bay Souls and those two rhythm games, they want to try and have it in more games now in the future. Um, this is how they plan on increasing the revenues by decreasing the cost. So they want to automate uh, as much as possible of the work. They want to use AI to make things more operationally efficient and they want to, and also like reduce their operation costs. Um, yeah, it's just optimization all over. And then in terms of user focus, they want to integrate trends in campaigns, reinforce user communication. That's where the discourse um, platform that they created are uh, in this like strategy that they have. Is it working? Well, we've seen how they uh, they work out the feedback that we send uh, to them on their official Discord. And then real events online offline. Well, because of the pandemic, mm, not really been there, but it's, you know. And then other focus on casual games. The reason why they want focus on casual games is because it is a lot less expensive to make. It takes a lot less time to make. It is It has like a uh, worldwide target, etc., etc. So it's basically, they can get a lot more games out of the door in a shorter period of time with a lot less investment. So that's just like diversification. So even if the assets depreciate, well, they will still, it's like quick box kind of games. And then boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's the Jojo game I mentioned, but it looks like it's mainly like focused on like Asia and like trying to expand in the globally afterwards. Um, Approach to original IPs, whatever. Um, this is the strategy for their forecast for 2023. This is what they're trying to do. Creating a world of excitement. Yes, sure. Trend revenues, trend number of employees. Bleach Bay Souls really is the powerhouse for KLab right now. Like it's surpassed 60 million downloads worldwide, which is huge. In, uh, in contrast, Love Life has been here for a lot longer. So it's been here since 2013 and it's at 45 million dollars. So right now, Bleach Bay Soul is the powerhouse for KLab. And uh, then we have this one, New Actual, which is struggling at 6 million downloads. Love Life, which, is, uh, which has been really struggling. And this one, they don't even communicate download numbers because <laughs> it's probably really bad. When a company doesn't give numbers, there's a reason behind that. Now, there's one last piece of information that I wanted to bring to your attention, and it's not the least interesting. And I think it's, yes, that's the one. You know how we've had like all those server problems in the past with KLab? Well, check this out. Server costs over the years. So from 2018 to 2021. So 103 uh, million yens, 100, 146, tuk, 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 up to almost 200 million yens in the third quarter of 2020. But now... We're down to 162, which is kind of like back in mid-2020, uh, mid uh, 2019. So it's like they are trying, it's like they're trying to save on server costs or something like, and we've seen this in the game. Anyway, <laughs> I'm digressing now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's rather long. I don't usually do like such long videos, but I really like diving into the world of like what goes behind the scenes for those kind of games. And I hope you uh, you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Tschüss.